So, good morning. It's 8.52 a.m. and it's the year 2000 and I'm at the Santa Barbara Biltmore Hotel. And I've been called here that day instead of the office along with my team. And I walk into this ballroom with chandeliers and arch windows overlooking the ocean. And I notice not just my team, but the entire company, everybody from Balance Bar was there. And someone hands me a glass of champagne. <laughs> and I see my boss walk up, and he has a big grin on his face. And he's wearing a standard Hawaiian shirt. He's the CEO of Balance Bar. And he says, good news, everybody. We have been acquired. And I know I'm supposed to feel pretty elated at that moment. I look around the room and I see not many people smiling. In fact, a few are actually starting to tear up. What should have been a happy moment felt more like defeat. You see, I had moved my whole life across country to run the marketing and build a brand that was more authentic, more sustainable, healthier. And I wasn't finished yet. We weren't finished yet. So weeks and months later, I found myself going back to New York and to these offices with Joe Camel posters over my head. You see, Philip Morris owned Kraft Foods, the acquiring company at that time. And I knew that our journey was over, this journey was over, and so I planned my exit. Fast forward 10 years, and I'd been working with companies that I could find that had a long view some healthy, sustainable, authentic food companies, companies like Alter Eco Foods and Numi Tea. Go back. And I one day walked into the office of Ahmed Rahim, the CEO and founder of Numi Tea. I was working with him. And we started to talk about the fact that in the food industry, there are a lot of people, great people working really hard to improve our food system and, and build more sustainable food products. And they were all doing it alone. Sustainability doesn't happen in a silo. And so at that moment, that day, OSC squared, one step closer to an organic and sustainable community was born. And our mission is to bring food leaders together to work on big, tough food problems challenges that are um, broad sweeping and working on building more regenerative business models together. So that very first day, that the first meeting that we got together, there were 10 leaders in my dining room, our first meeting for OSC Squared, CEOs of Guayaquil and Numi and Alter Eco, Treasure 8, Nutiva, Plum, And we talked about a lot of challenges that we shared. We all shared a lot of challenges in the food system that we were working on alone. But there was one big one that we all shared. It wasn't actually the food itself. It was the packaging. I'm going to tell the alter ego story. I've been thinking about packaging for a long time. Eight years ago, I lived in a village in Ghana called Krobo with four other women. We were volunteering on a fair trade women's co-op project. And after some time being there, we began to start to crave some Western comfort food. So we'd go into the capital and stock up on things like chips and crackers and canned beans, bring them back to our village. It made us really happy to have this comfort food. Our village didn't have any trash pickup like all the other villages in Ghana. So we'd put all these packages into a pile, as did all the other villagers. One day, I'm sitting behind my hut, and a man sets the, the pile on fire. And I see this big black smoke. And I was horrified. This big, stinky plastic was burning right in front of me. And we all know that awful, awful smell. And I thought, oh, what have we done? Four months later, it was time to leave. I turned around as I was walking out of this village. I looked at that pile and I thought, oh, I can't take it with me. It's just going to have to stay there. But at the same time, I knew I had to do something about it. 
When I got back to the States, I started working for Alter Ego, a fair trade food company in San Francisco, in their operations department. One of our first priorities was to reduce our packaging footprint. At the time, we were selling our quinoa in a bag, in a box, kind of like cereal. And so we decided to do what all the other brands at the time were doing. We removed the box and we put it in a stand-up pouch, kind of like, like this one. Well, the response from our consumers was overwhelmingly negative. They said it looked plasticky and it was very uneco of us to do something like that, even though we had removed an entire layer of packaging. So a little while into this package, I decided to do a new footprint, took a look at the numbers. This is a three millimeter thick pouch. So I just added one on top of another, on top of another, on top of another, did the math. One year of purchases of this package was two miles high. One brand, one year, one package, two miles. This was totally unacceptable to us. We knew we needed a gold standard solution and we needed to take the long view on packaging. So we chose compostables, something that would go away. And incidentally, compostable stand-up pouches didn't exist at the time. So we were in for some challenges. The first challenge was, well, how does a pouch work anyway? We're all used to standard over-engineered polyethylene pouches, which the same pouch can protect your granola as your sugar, as your nuts, all exactly the same. But compostables were different. It was not a one-size-fits-all solution. It's kind of like in nature where you have an apple skin protecting an apple and an avocado skin protecting an avocado. Nature has picked the perfect skin for what it's trying to protect inside, and Alter Ego needed to figure that out to protect our quinoa. Our challenge was not insignificant. We were trying to pick a material to protect our food, keep it fresh and safe for as long as possible, and then it would go away when we were done with it. It's completely outrageous. We realized we didn't have much purchasing power, so we needed to realign with partners who believed in our mission and taking the long view to reducing trash. And four iterations later, we met Laura, the OSC. And I knew from working with a lot of companies through OSC Squared and consulting with a lot of natural foods companies that Gene was not alone, Alter Eco was not alone. There are a lot of ethical foods in unethical packaging. And they wanted to fix it, but nobody had enough volume to get the attention of the packaging and the film industry. So we took a risk on our vision. We wanted to see who would show up at Natural Products Expo West 2013 at 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning. And we invited 25 food leaders to talk with us. And 25 filed into the room. And then 50. And then 100 people showed up. And we looked around and we were nervous. We ran out of muffins. We were also thrilled because we had over $2 billion worth of sales revenue represented in that room that day. And the packaging and the film partners that we had chosen and invited to come could see that opportunity. That day, we started a movement in packaging. We started the OSC Squared Packaging Coalition. And our mission is to remove petroleum-based plastic from landfill, from our oceans, from the planet. And our first goal is to secure a non-GMO home compostable material to be an alternative to what Jean is showing you. The Packaging Coalition has grown in the last two and a half years significantly to 25 brands, retailers, film partners. And we have collaboration that we haven't seen in, in any way before because we even have competing brands working together. So, what are we actually doing? What are we doing? Well, we are picking not just one, but a number of different overwraps we've identified. And um, it's actually pretty tricky to figure that out, which, which um, different materials go together. And we're matching them with a variety of different ingredients, broad categories, matching food with its best skin. And you'll see what we're testing, chia seeds, chips, 
toddler foods, pastas, nuts, jerkies, broad categories of foods so that we have a database and understand how compostable packaging can work, not just for each individual brand, but for the entire industry. And Alter Eco is taking a big step forward, a big step, one big step closer for all of us by launching the first flexible pouch in 2016. This is a preview of it. Fixing packaging, though, we know is not enough. Not enough to just fix it. We need to actually route it back to the soil, and that's not easy to do. So we're working with certifiers and composting facilities to actually bring it full circle. This movement is not easy, but it's very collaborative, and it's radical collaboration because we're open sourcing and we're taking the long view together. So I don't live in Ghana anymore, I live in San Francisco, where the piles of trash may not be in front of my face, but they're much, much bigger. So what's our vision? Imagine going into your grocery store and every product you buy, every package, disappears when you're through with it. Our vision is that every energy bar wrapper, sugar pouch, granola bag, doesn't sit in a landfill forever, but goes back into the soil the way nature intended. It's radical, it's outrageous, and we're doing it. Thank you. Thank you.